Good morning, everybody. It's raining here. I don't know what it is like where you are at, but whatever it is like outside, it doesn't matter because we are in the Word of God together. And that just brings me joy. I don't know about you guys. I hope it does. Today we're in the book of Exodus. And my husband was threatening to do the dishes or shoot squirrels or something. <laughs> I told him, no, everybody be quiet just for a few minutes. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so we're in the book of Exodus and Moses has gotten up the nerve to go talk with Pharaoh. And remember that 40 years prior, Moses had fled Egypt because Pharaoh was seeking to kill him, but Moses had murdered an Egyptian who was attacking an Israelite. Not exactly a cozy place to go home to, right? Hey, good morning, Diane. Good to see you. Reading from the CSB translation, this is Exodus 5, verses 1 through 4. Later, Moses and Aaron went in and said to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go, so that they may hold a festival for me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh responded, Who is the Lord, that I should obey him by letting Israel go? I don't know the Lord, and besides, I will not let Israel go. They answered, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go on a three-day trip into the wilderness so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, or else he may strike us, us is an interesting word, with plague or sword. The king of Egypt said to him, Moses and Aaron, why are you causing the people to neglect their work? Get to your labor. Pharaoh also said, look, the people of the land are so numerous and you would stop them from their labor. Good morning, Lin Melinda. So there's a few things that are kind of interesting in here. First off, he does start off the Lord, the God of Israel. But later, it's like the God of the Hebrews has met with us. I just think that's kind of interesting because in Egyptian religions, which they had many gods, they would always refer to it as the God of, you know, whatever. And there's Ra and all these other fake gods. But he's trying to say, look, we're going to speak your language a little bit here. The God of the Hebrews has called us, and we've, we've got to do this <laughs> because he's calling us to do it. So because of Moses making this request, Pharaoh said that he would not supply the straw any longer for their brick making. But he still had the same expectation of them and how many bricks they produced. And the overseas seers who were being beaten because they could not do the impossible came back and confronted Moses. Moses went back to the Lord and complained. And I just want to read a few of these verses and then I'm going to break it down for you guys. Picking up in Exodus 5, 22 through 6, 13. So Moses went back to the Lord and asked, Lord, why have you caused trouble for this people? And why did you ever send me? Ever since I went into Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has caused trouble for this people and you haven't rescued your people at all. But the Lord replied to Moses, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of a strong hand, he will let them go. And because of a strong hand, he will drive them from his land. Then God spoke to Moses telling him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. But I was not known to them by the name the Lord. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land they lived in as aliens. Furthermore, <laughs> I have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are forcing to work as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore tell the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from the forced labor of the Egyptians and rescue you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outreached, outreached arm and great acts of judgment. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. You will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Moses told this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and hard labor. Anyone identify with that at times? It's hard to hear when we're suffering. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go and tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the Israelites go from this land. Hey, Kathy. 
But Moses said in the Lord's presence, if the Israelites will not listen to me, then how will Pharaoh listen to me since I am such a poor speaker? Here comes that excuse again. <laughs> then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them commands concerning both the Israelites and Pharaoh king of Egypt to bring the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. So that's a lot there. Hey, Ray, good to see you. Y'all, that's my band director from like seventh through ninth grade. <laughs> good to see you. So here's some application. Have you ever felt like God has called you to do something and it was difficult? Okay, everyone should be saying amen to that because life is hard. Doubt creeps in because we thought it should be unicorns and roses, right? When we do the work of the Lord. Wherever we got that idea that it's supposed to be easy, that expectation of ease can quickly set us up to be on our knees. God never promised that life would be easy. Sorry to break it to you today. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that before, but the reality of that is hard and it feels uncaring. But hold on a second. Even back then, God's people did not want to have to wait. They wanted God's rescue to happen yesterday. How about you? Are you in a difficult place right now and you just wish with a wave of your hand it could be all over? When we are tempted to doubt, we need to cry out. This is what it means to be in relationship with God. When we have those hard places, it's not a time to come and complain to him or to argue with him or to question his purposes because we know our God is sovereign. We know that he uses all things together for good for those who are called by Jesus. And so Moses came back to God with doubts. He had obeyed and now he wanted the goods. <laughs> <laughs> I know from being a parent, you know, there's so many times when my kids are like, okay, I did it. Now give me what I want. <laughs> and I think there's so much more that is happening that God is doing in the hearts of his people than just accomplishing what we think is the purpose. God is accomplishing amazing things and miracles in our midst. Hey there, Eunice, good to see you, friend. So why, look at the questions that Moses has as he comes to God. Maybe you've had some of these. Why have you caused trouble for those people? Why did you ever send me? And then this accusation, you haven't rescued your people at all. And then another statement, if the Israelites will not listen to me, then how will Pharaoh listen to me? Since I am, here it goes guys, a poor speaker. <laughs> Moses is only human, the most humble human to walk the earth in that day, you guys. That's what scripture says about him. And these were his questions. Has your heart ever asked why? Mine has. I don't think why is a bad question. It depends on the heart behind that why. Are we coming knowing that God is sovereign and saying, God, I really don't get this. It's because we're looking at the waves instead of the maker of the waves, y'all. Even though Moses does not understand why the task is hard or why God's deliverance is not immediate, he still obeys. He still goes. Friends, God has sent you and I to do his work too. It might not be to uh, people making bricks and without straw. It may not be anything like we thought it was supposed to look like. But God has a call in our life. And for real, this world needs Jesus. They need to see God in us. We are carriers of the presence of God. This is real. This is us, people who've been saved by the most incredible grace in the world. We get to exemplify that grace to the world. How well are you carrying God to this world? We aren't perfect, but we can cry out to God for help when the task just seems too hard. When we think about a work of God, maybe we think of missions, but I would suggest that even our daily relationships can be our calling and they can be hard, right? We're called to raise godly children. How is that working out? We're called to have a marriage that reflects the love of God. How is that working out? You see, 
it's hard because we are in this flesh and we're learning how to walk in the spirit to deny our flesh when it just you know just wants to be counter what god has called us to the scripture of the day is taken from Exodus 6, verses 28 through 30, and this is the New Living Translation. When the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, he said to them, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I am telling you. But Moses argued with the Lord, saying, I can't do it. I'm such a clumsy speaker. Why should Pharaoh listen to me? So guys, even this Bible time, uh, I've had probably several little slip-ups of the tongue already <laughs> in today's presentation. Every day I make mistakes. But I realize, you know, I'm not doing it to be perfect. And look, you know, this year with the melanoma and the messed up hair, <laughs> I'm definitely not doing it for any kind of like, look how neat Denise looks doing this. I'm doing this because God has put it on my heart. There's biblical illiteracy in this world. And I desperately want to be deep in God's word and I want to help others to be as well. And so I'm a clumsy speaker too. <laughs> I make mistakes. I'm a goofball sometimes. And we got people making noise in the background as we're all hibernating in isolation. <laughs> but do what God's called you to do. What can you do during this pandemic? I may have already shared it on here that... Um, Oh, now I'm forgetting the name. Huh? What was the name of that guy who uh, invented calculus during the... Newton. Newton. Isaac Newton. <laughs> uh, and how during a, a pandemic of his day, a plague, he was sent to his home and God used him in an amazing way to invent calculus. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> he he had to invent been that? He what? He invented big news. Oh, come on. <laughs> My husband said he also invented fig newtons. Yeah, we're really corny around here, you guys. <laughs> but remember when God is calling us, it is God Almighty calling us, okay? He's already said go. We've already gotten the, the order. Don't let your expectations be a stumbling block that prevents you from doing God's work and what you think it should look like. Let go of worrying when it, go, when it is going See, here's another little, let go of worrying what it is going to look like and just be faithful to do the work. Somewhere in the midst of the daily fray is the presence of God and miracles being done in our midst. Like Moses, when we don't understand, we can know that God has a plan and his plans are yes and amen. His plans always come to fruition. You know, sin of man might create some stumbling blocks and difficulties, but God is still gonna complete the work he's begun in us. Not me, I can't, <laughs> God is. The expression, I am the Lord, I tried to find out how many times that was uh, spoken in, or written in, um, in the book of Exodus. I found 62 occurrences just in scripture in general, so if you guys can find it, put it in the comments. Anyway, the point is, it was said a lot. I am the Lord is reminding Moses of the great name of God, Yahweh. He confirmed that he remained the covenant-making and covenant-keeping God who would absolutely fulfill his promise to Moses. So when he was saying his name, he was saying, I'm sending you. It's me. By my authority, I'm going to do this. Sometimes we look to man to more than to God. Moses feared those he was being sent to. The Israelites, his own people, and the Egyptians who raised him. Okay, this is a tough crowd. You know, didn't scripture also say that Jesus' own people, he said that they're not going to receive you. It's hard, y'all. Hey, I got people who don't really, you know, they're not fans. <laughs> and I don't mean fans in the traditional sense of I don't have fans. We all have that. We all have people who maybe aren't gonna receive it from us. That's okay. That's not our tribe. That's not who we're called to speak to. Just go. Another thing too that was interesting, heads up here, Moses was 80 years old and his brother Aaron was 83 when God sent them. Okay, so the excuse of being too old, <laughs> nope. Never too old to be used by God, never too old. And Moses tried the excuse of not being a good speaker, 
So what excuses keep you from following God's calling on your life? Don't let excuses prevent you from being used by God and don't let people validate or invalidate the work of God in your life. Go friends, God wants to use you for his glory and it will be the most amazing adventure of your life. Keep your eyes on him, not the obstacles. So guys, next week, we're gonna go into the plagues a little bit. I figured uh, even though it started, some of the plagues were starting up here at the end of our reading today, I'm just gonna hit that next week. Very fitting, right? We're gonna be talking about plagues. So maybe God will use us in profound ways during this plague too. You guys, thank you for being here today. Hey there, Bijou. Hey there, Tana. And thanks, Diane.